American writers only went back to work two days ago, but could we now see some of Hollywood's biggest stars on strike? George Clooney, Tom Hanks, Meryl Streep and Robert De Niro have placed adverts in newspapers telling the Screen Actors Guild that it's time to negotiate the actors' contracts or they could walk out. Peter Bowes is uh, in L.A. for us tonight. So, uh, Peter, what's this all about? Well, this is the last thing that Hollywood wants. The writers are just getting back to work and the possibility of a strike by the Hollywood actors is something that would just uh, be the last straw, I think, for a lot of people in this city when they're just getting back to work. The situation is that the actors' contract expires on the 30th of June. It has to be renegotiated. And they'll be renegotiating on similar issues to the writers, uh, the payments that the actors get, especially when their work appears on the Internet, when it's streamed, when it's downloaded. And uh, the situation now is that people like George Clooney, Meryl Streep, are concerned that if the talks don't start now and they get to that deadline, that Hollywood could be facing another strike. Peter, how much clout does the charming uh, George Clooney really have? Well, George Clooney actually does have quite a lot of clout, uh, and the other names that you've mentioned, people like Meryl Streep, he could describe this group of actors uh, as the elder statesmen, elder stateswoman of, of Hollywood, and people take notice, especially George Clooney is quite political these days, and he talked the other day at the Oscar nominees luncheon of the strike fatigue that Hollywood and Los Angeles is facing. And uh, he is a member of a huge union, more than 100,000 members. Two-thirds of those members earn less than $1,000 in a year from acting. So you can see there's a wide scale of income to, for this union and these negotiations to deal with. Of course, George Clooney, you could argue, probably doesn't need the money, but a lot of actors do. The Hollywood actors, Peter, publicly uh, supported the writers in the writers' strike. Will the writers now do the same for the actors? I think it's very likely that they will because the writers at the end of their strike made a very big deal of the, the fact that they appreciated the solidarity of the actors and other union organizations in Los Angeles to eventually get the deal that they got. So I think, effectively, the writers would return the favor and support the actors. Peter, thank you for joining us. That was Peter Bowes in L.A. You're watching Entertainment 24 from BBC News. A few other stories tonight. Europe's considering extending music copyright laws. The period in which performers could earn royalties could almost double from 50 years to 95 years. British stars like Cliff Richard have been pushing for this for some time. It would mean musicians like him getting a big boost to their lifetime earnings. As the Who singer Roger Daltrey put it, thousands of artists don't have pensions and need to rely on royalties. Mel Gibson's been praised by an L.A. judge for completing his alcohol rehab treatment. The Mad Max actor will still remain on probation for a further 18 months. He was caught drink driving and speeding in July last year. The 52-year-old star sparked outrage when he made anti-Semitic remarks during his arrest. And what a way to turn up to a film premiere with five hunky firemen. That's how Uma Thurman arrived for her premiere last night. The movie's called The Accidental Husband and she plays a radio agony aunt who falls in love uh, with Colin Firth, who plays a fireman. Of course, it's Valentine's Day, the day when we declare our love to our nearest and dearest, and Jerry Hall has done just that. She admitted to the Daily Mirror today that she still loves Mick Jagger. He was, after all, the man who swept her off her feet for a good part of their 23-year-old relationship, but he was also the man who publicly broke her heart. Jerry says it's now platonic love for the Rolling Stones bad boy. Now, if you've been watching BBC One on a Saturday night, you'll know that Graham Norton's been searching for the one and only tribute act. The prize is a three-month performing contract in Las Vegas with the world's longest-running celebrity impersonator show. But to win, performers not only have to sing live like a musical superstar, they have to look like them, dress like them, and act like them. Two of the competitors in the final this weekend are Joanna Burns and Tony Lewis, who transform literally into Cher and Robbie Williams. Uh, guys, thank you, Joanna and Tony, for joining us, uh, joining us today. Now, I'm going to start with you, Joanna, because, you know, last weekend, you looked and sounded like Cher. Have you studied the woman herself in detail? Yes, very much so. I've spent a lot of hours studying her on video and watching her every move and every sound that comes out of her mouth, basically. 
<laughs> uh, and you actually look like her. Is that hours and hours of makeup? Yes, it is for the actual look um, the, that uh, you see on the screen. Yes, it takes hours. You've got her eyelashes. Yes. Yes, and that's good. And now I'll come over to you, Tony. Um, you know, you actually look like Robbie Williams in real life. I've got to say that. When I saw you walking in, I thought, oh, that looks a bit, a bit like Robbie. Um, how are you coping with all those female fans approaching you? Because I understand you went to Uma's premiere last night and got mobbed. <laughs> We went to the premiere last night, had a great night. Um, the fans and uh, the comments were very positive. Great feedback and it's always nice to be noticed. Perks of the job, I suppose. Mm. So has a lot of people told you you really do look like Robbie Williams? Yeah, we get it every now and then. You know, we get quite a lot of people coming up and saying, you know you look like, but now it's nice that they know us as Tony from the one and only as Robbie, so that's a really positive buzz. Forget Robbie, it's all about Tony. It's all about Tony. I'm going to ask the both of you, how has this show changed your lives? Well, for me, I've actually been performing as chef for 10 years, but the, really? best, yeah, 10 years. the best thing about it has been the training that we've received, um, because previous to that, it was just, you know, on your own doing what you thought was right. But the fact that we've had this intense training, it's meant that I've learned more in the last few weeks than I have in the last 10 years. It's been a really, really good experience. And Tony, for you, the pressure's really on this weekend. That's the final. I think the pressure's off a little bit. I think getting to the final was a great achievement. I'm sure Joel will agree that. Um, go out and enjoy it. If we don't enjoy it and lose the moment, you know what I mean, it's us who's going to suffer. So take it for what it is, enjoy it, and uh, if we get to Vegas, what a massive, massive bonus. So uh, you guys, uh, a lot of good luck, actually, for this weekend, and I uh, hope one of you wins. Yeah, thank, thank you. you very much. Brilliant, and thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, I'd like to also know what you guys think of today's entertainment stories. Drop me an email. The address is e24 at bbc.co.uk. Well, that's all the entertainment news for now. I'll be back at 9.30. Join me then.